I got a card from Laura. It's not really a card. Her secretary sent it, signed it again. Oh, joy. Happy Mother's Day. At least you got one. Your Elliot should know better. I always felt I felt failed as a mother. It's not the way he was raised and not the way he used to be. Call him. I did. Alani picked up, said he wasn't there. Hiding behind the phone or too busy playing golf. Was she friendly? She's never been really friendly. It's a cultural thing. I'm not sure why. Have you told him about the house? Not yet. Will he care? Hard to say. I doubt he even remembers it. He's been away so long. Boarding school, college, moving from place to place. Been in Hawaii the longest. Maybe because her family is there. Men always end up near the woman's family. Should have had a daughter. I don't know if that holds true. Laura and I have always been at odds with each other. Even as a toddler, if I said she'd be, if I said stay, she'd be gone. If I said use your inside voice, she'd shout just to get a rise out of me. She was daddy's girl. And since he was cruel to me, she thought she could be cruel to me too. Got her way, always. Tough. Yeah, Laura couldn't wait to get away from me. She's never coming back. She's into in the New York scene. She's into the New York groove now. Nothing better, according to her. Happy? No, she's never happy. But she likes the money and the clothes and her posh apartment. I can't believe what she has to pay. What? Fifteen hundred a month for an apartment. That's that's her maintenance fees. Can you imagine her mortgage and taxes? I had no idea. That seems vulgar to me. I can't get my head around spending that kind of money. That's because we've never had that kind of money. Still, I think it's so wasteful. That's why we're friends. We think the same. Do you have the list of questions? Uh, on my phone. You are so clever. Hmm. You're going to have a lesson when you move in. It's time. It's over time. I don't have a smarty phone. So you'll learn on mine or on my iPad. I'm lost already. Mm -hmm. Here, read. This is what we'll ask. I'm going to get a refill. Ellie, do you want another cup? Uh -huh. One's my limit. Like your men. Carol. Who are we seeing? I've narrowed it down to three women. They all want in. One seems desperate like us. How many did we get all together? Ten. Seven were completely wrong. People don't read. One was looking for free housing. One was a man, of all things. What did the good ones say in their emails? Uh, well, one never lived in a house before, only an apartment. I never had a house until I was married. I grew up in a house. When I went to college, I had a little studio place. The windows looked out on a brick wall. It was so lonely. Couldn't wait to get out of there. Left the place. Left school. Are you sure you don't want to keep Laura's room for her? She can't be bothered visiting me. When I went to New York, I had to stay in a hotel. She didn't want me in her building. Didn't even see her place. So who else? Doorbell rings. Carol crosses and opens the door to find Gloria. Are you Carol? Uh, yes. Um, Gloria? Yeah. <laughs> oh, please, come in. Have a seat. Thanks. I thought I knew what this place was, but I've been going around and around. Parking is a nightmare in this area. These damn university kids. Too bad we couldn't have them met up by the highway. <laughs> so much easier. She sits and puts her feet up, turns to Ellie. Who are you? Uh, this is Ellie Mackin. She's going to be living with me. So you've chosen people already? <laughs> that's not fair no, Ellie is my friend we came up with the idea together there are still two open rooms <laughs> glad to hear that I hate when people advertise something and then they turn out to be false you know the type you can't trust most of what's on Craigslist so uh, 
why do you think you want to live in my house? Well, first of all, it'd be cheaper than where I am now. It's such a dump. And for what I'm paying, it should be a palace. This is much nicer. It's a lovely street. So why else? I mean, so why else? Uh, my lease is up at the end of the month. I have to move. The loud lady's a B, if you know what I mean. Uh, so is there some other reason you answered my ad? Well, that's pretty much it. Well, uh, we'll have rules about visitors, that sort of thing. Like living in a dorm? Huh. I have some men friends who like to come over. That won't work. We can't be having men coming and going. What is this, the 50s? For security, that sort of thing. I guess I can sleep at their places when I want some uh, romance. So um, how many women are you seeing and when will you decide? I, I need to know right away. We'll be talking over the candidates this evening and deciding. Do I have a shot? You're our first interview. After I interview the others, we'll see. My mother always said that. We'll see, which meant no. Um, I'll email everyone after the interviews. That's it? That, that, that was fast. Well, for now, yes. Very nice meeting you. Carol stands and offers her hand. Gloria stands looks at the two women. Gloria walks out, silence. I hope the others are better, nicer. Marie? A hundred percent, that one was trouble. Ellie, maybe this isn't such a good idea. I, I don't know what I'll do if this doesn't work. What'll we do? It's a great idea. As long as we can find the right women. We can't give up. Who's next? Uh, her name is Maylene. She's a retired professor. She's the one who seems desperate. Wonder why? I don't know. I, I would have thought she had a decent pension. I hope she's nicer than Gloria. Should we get into expenses with the next one? You've decided? Well, to start with, I listed all the costs and divided them by four. It seems fair. Well, you should pay less. You're providing the space. I'd have to pay three times as much on my own. I don't have the money for that. And I told you, you're all saving me. You're all keep giving me company. What's it include? Uh, my mortgage, of course, taxes, insurance, a uh, little extra for emergencies, utility, including internet and cable. I don't use internet. Do you use all the facilities in a hotel when you check in? I don't go to hotels. It's all part of the package. You want to learn, don't you? The doorbell rings. Carol crosses to the door and opens it. Hello, I'm Aileen. Am I too early? Uh, not at all. Please come in, sit down. I'm Carol, and this is my friend Ellie. She'll be in the house. How nice you have a friend joining you. Uh, let me ask you a few questions, and then you can ask about anything I haven't covered. Okay, that sounds good. Beautiful home. <laughs> I was a little nervous that you your ad might be a scam. I have to be careful with my money. Mm -hmm. uh, you said in your email that you're a bit desperate? To, to find the right kind of place. I, and yours seems ideal. I, I lost my pension. So, so I live on social security and what I've saved in the bank. I never married, don't have kids, of course. So I have to depend on myself. My apartment is very nice, but they've just raised the rent. Again, now I really can't afford it. I should have bought a place when I was teaching, but never got around to it. Oh, I'm talking too much. Oh, not at all. It helps us get to know you. You've answered my first question anyway. <laughs> Do you know how much you'll be charging? There's no sense my waiting, wasting your time if it's, if it's too expensive for me. I've put together a budget with everything I can think of to run the house and we'd have to adjust it up or down 
own after six months. I don't want to pay more than you can afford, and I don't want to spend my money to have guests. Round figures, it comes out to about $775 per month per person. Oh, of, of course, but um, were you expecting less? I'm sorry, but Carol has to be able to pay her bills without supporting the other women. No, of course, but uh, I I was so afraid it would be more that I wouldn't be able to consider it. But now, please, please ask me anything, really. Have you always lived by yourself? Since grad school, I never liked the idea of sharing. Until now, I mean, as long as I have my own room, I'll, I'll be happy. I tend to stay by myself. It's not that I'm not social. I, I am. But like my quiet time, too. Alone time. Oh, I'm, I'm talking too much again. <laughs> I think that happens when you live alone. You get someone who'll listen, and it all spurts out. Not that you're spurting. I didn't mean that. No. Uh, do you have a car? I do. Is that a problem? Not at all. There's room for two in the driveway, and there's plenty of on-street parking. What about guests? Uh-oh. Here we go. I have two college friends who come to visit me from time to time, and I'd like to have them come over and for coffee or a meal. Is, is that a problem? As long as there isn't a parade of men in and out. <laughs> Ellie! Well, that last one scared me. <laughs> no, no worries. I like men, but I, I have no one special. I would, I would honor that rule. Okay. Well, without getting into everyone's business, I've decided to have a key and note wall. When you come home, you have to hang your keys on the board. That way we know that everyone was safe and not be worrying. If the keys are gone, it means the owner is out or leave a note. Is that okay by you? That sounds good and, and smart. I'd, I'd like having someone look out for me. What if someone doesn't come home and, and hang their keys? Well, we check for a note or a text. And if no info, we call the cops. Kidding. It's one way we know who's home or not for calls and such. And if there's an emergency, I would expect a phone call or a text so we'd know. Hmm. Well, here's my resume and, and, and personal details. I hope you consider me. No, you haven't seen the, the rest of the house yet. It looks so nice. I, I'm sure the rest of the house is too. I love the veranda. Oh, the front of it. My grandmother had a house like this. That's nice. Oh, what about our details? You want to know something about us? I already checked, but Carol's name into the search bar and it, it, it came right up. Hmm. Carol, did you know this? Well, sure. I researched Maylene too. What about me? I know you. I don't need to look you up. <laughs> but other people could? Sure. And I'll bet they have. Huh. May, may I ask the next step? After we finish the interviews, we'll discuss the candidates and do background checks. I'm very interested. My credit rating is good. And honestly, I'd like to have some, some new friends. Me too. We were talking about that last week when we, when Carol posted the ad. The older I get, the more I like and depend on women for company. I'm not gay or anything. <laughs> hmm. would, it would okay. be okay if you were teaching has taught me a lot about accepting everyone i wish more people felt that way i've taken up enough of your time um you have all my details i hope to hear from you maylene stands and shakes hands with both women <sighs> Looks like this old folks home for women may work and fun. Oh, I hope we have fun.
Well, at least we'll be able to look out for each other. I like Maybe. This sounds awful, but I didn't think we'd get a black woman looking. It didn't occur to me. Didn't give it any thought. Not that I care. Me neither. It's actually a good thing. We can learn from each other. But to be honest, she's the first black person I've met. Personally, I mean, where I grew up, there was a black section. Was told never to go there. All the black kids went to another high school. Where have you been? I've never had the opportunity, that's all. It's not my fault. That's how it was back then. Yeah, but this is now. How is it you've never had a conversation at least with a person of color? I just never did. Not even at work. Well, I hope you don't share that with Maylene if she joins us. The doorbell rings and Ellie answers the door. Are you Carol? No, I'm Ellie. I'll be living here. Come in. This is Carol. Hello. Please sit down. Janet Gorlick. Carol offers I'm... her hand. Janet vigorously shakes both of their hands. I'm a bit early. I want to be sure to find you on time, so I left early. I'm staying with my friend at the moment, but it's not working out. Where is she? He. Kingsford? Well, the outskirts. The house is small, and I think it's moldy because I keep getting headaches. I'm usually very healthy, so it bothers me. Oh, well, I don't have to ask why you're interested in my house, then. I'd like to live in a smaller city like this. It's not too crowded here, and the college is bonus. I mean, regular people can join their gym. I may have to check out the college. Mm -hmm. They have great community classes. No transfers needed. I have the brochure. Really interesting courses. It sounds as if you need a place soon. The sooner, the better. We're making decisions for the first of the month. Perfect. That. I mean, it would be perfect if I could move in. Uh, well, I'll be doing background checks, and I'll need some financial information so I know you can pay the rent. Will there be a lease? I would want to look at this as long term. Yes, we're going to have a trial period of six months where we iron out all the details, but I'm hoping to have everyone long term. I don't want people moving in and out. That would suit me very well. Good. The proposed rent with everything included is $775 a month. I love you people already. <laughs> I've been widowed a long time, and when my husband was killed, I didn't get any money. I live off my pension and social security, such as it is. I to hear about your husband. Vietnam War, toughest time in my life. I would think. We treated our military badly back then. I've had a good life. Educated hundreds of kids. Thousands. Now, what uh, other questions do you have for us? Who are the other candidates? Well, there have only been two more, unless I get some more inquiries. I got a couple of number of replies, but some were definitely not right for us. I didn't like one of the ones we interviewed, so your chances are good. Ellie. I'm just being honest. I like that you are. That's important to me. Any other questions? Not really. Your ad was very specific. Great. Well, I have your number, and as soon as I do the background check, including your finances, I'll get back to you. Either way. Should we tell her about Maylene? I don't think it's an issue. What? Uh, would it bother you? Um, do you have strong feelings about race? She's black? Yes. My husband was black. One of the greatest college football players ever. Not an issue. I'm so glad. We really liked her. Janet takes some papers out of her purse. Here's my information, uh, bank and credit check info. She stands and passes the papers to Carol. Thank you for taking the time to interview me. I'm very interested. Our pleasure. We'll be in touch shortly. Janet leaves. Ellie and Carol look at each other. I think we found our roommates. This may work out yet. It has to work out. Fingers crossed. <laughs> End of scene. Act one, scene two. It's the end of May. The doorbell rings. 
Carol hurries to open the door. Hi, Janet. Glad you could make it. Am I too early? Not at all. Come in. We'll meet in the living room. Go right in. I just, I'm just i just making coffee. Let me help. Oh, you can bring in the cups and stuff. <laughs> they both exit toward the kitchen as they talk. Your home is so beautiful. I'm, you know, just... Now it'll be your home. The doorbell rings again. Carol rushes to answer it. Janet enters the kitchen and returns with cups and saucers immediately after. Am I too early? No. Always better than being late. Uh, this is Janet, another housemate. I'd shake your hand, but I'm going to drop this off and make a bad impression. <laughs> Janet moves toward the living room area. Come in and, and make yourself comfortable. I'll just get the coffee. Carol exits. Janet speaks to Maylene as they move to the living room. I don't know about you, but this house is heaven sent for me. Me too. My lease was coming up. I've been dumping money into my apartment for 10 years. You'd think the landlord would appreciate a good tenant, but I suppose his bills are rising too. Everything's rising. I can hardly keep up. You from this area? I'm moving from Knoxville. Taught there for 27 years. <laughs> Beat you. Taught 31 years. Ooh. High school. Carol enters with coffee pot and starts <laughs> pouring. Ellie's coming too. I'm looking forward to learning all about your lives. Must be my anthropology background. I taught Jim and I want to know too. Well, help yourselves to sugar and milk. The doorbell rings. Good Lord, I can't wait till you all have keys. Carol answers the door and Ellie appears. Am I late? No, oh, you're right on time. I was on the phone to Elliot. Well, come in. You all remember Ellie? Sit down, I've got As coffee. Old. Your, your coffee is my lifelong fine. Carol continues to pour First the coffee. First of all, thanks for coming over. I wanted to settle before y'all move in. Yeah, we forgot to say no pets. Good. I'm allergic to most Keeps of them the anyway. Keeps cleaner. Smoking. We forgot to say that too. I don't. I've been known to but I, I, I won't anywhere else, even outside. I... But better for you anyway. So cheers. Carol raises her cup and they all toast. First of all, first I thought we'd do the room lottery. You've all seen them. I have four numbers. We'll each pick one to find out which room you'll be in. She shows them no, four in your small own. pieces of paper all folded up. You want to stay in your no. own room. You're all starting fresh, so I will too. Will we need much furniture? Each room is furnished, as you saw the last time. Some rooms are bigger than others. I, I don't care if you trade around. The furniture, I mean. Oh, very nice. Well, you've already seen them. I have furniture. Not much, but it's in storage. If you want to move stuff into my backyard shed, you can. Well, that would save you so much money. That way I might use a few pieces of my room, you know, if they'll fit. So pick a paper. Ellie, you go first. Each woman takes a paper. This is so much fun. Like a party. <laughs> we open them? Go. I got room three. Oh, that's my daughter's old room. There's a beautiful view over the garden. I call it the poppy room. Poppy's just outside the window in early spring. Does your daughter know you're giving her away her room? <laughs> She's all settled in the city. No worries. Ellie, which room did you get? Number one. Oh, good. That's my old room. <laughs> I, your room? I feel terrible. It's the best one. It's, it's a lottery and you won. I told you, I want a change. But... Maylene? 
I got room too. Ooh. That's the lovely big room out in the front. It's on the street, but it's very quiet, even at night. May we see them again? Sure. You remember out way out that way and up the stairs. There are numbers on the doors. Maylene and Janet rush out like schoolgirls. Yes. So excited. I'm pretty excited myself. Oh, fingers crossed are still, but I, I think this is gonna work out. I know it will. Carol, I've been dying to tell you this. Elliot is getting married. Oh, that's wonderful. When? Next week. He called me this morning to tell me. Are you going out for it? He didn't really invite me. I'm sorry. He told me Alani is pregnant, so... Oh, shotgun wedding. Well, better that than no gun. You'll be a granny. I never thought it would happen. S sorry it had to be this way. Quickie wedding. I'm disappointed, but not surprised. He's never things the normal way. We'll celebrate here. Have our own reception. You are so kind. Always. You're sure you don't want your old bedroom? No, it, it feels good to let it go after what I went through with Frank. Do you miss him? Like a sore tooth. I've never told you or anyone this ever. This last 10 years, not nice. He was nasty to me, verbally. All he could think about was gambling. I think I would have divorced him if he hadn't croaked. Good old heart attack. That's what happens when you drink and smoke. And swan around. I haven't heard that expression in years. Hmm. It's not really apt because swans are faithful to their partners. It should be goosed around. <laughs> We're doing this. I have good feelings about the two women. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry about your house, but I'm so happy you're here. I'm just glad I could pay off those bills. It was giving me a heart attack, which I didn't need. Plus, you have your health back, and that's what counts. Maylene and Janet tumble down the stairs and back into the room. I love that room and it smells so good. Cedar closets. Good, no moths. And my room is just gorgeous. Oh, I love the window seat. Perfect for reading and, and yellow is my favorite color. Good. Well, now, so we get to know each other. Tell us something that nobody knows about you or something about you or what your hopes are for the future. Carol keeps the notes in a notebook. I'll start. Carol and I have talked about this. I feel useless. I haven't really done anything with my life. I want to join the 21st century. First things first, you must join the world of the internet. I agree. Mm -hmm. Email? Go online to research? I type. That's oh. it. Oh, honey, you are about to join a whole new world. It'll work you. It'll work with you, though. Me, too. You're going to be surprised with what's out there. Sort of scares me. Well, good. That way you'll be careful. So we'll need to schedule lessons for Ellie. Do you want, uh, do you want to share with the women why you're here? I've been struggling with some medical issues. I had no insurance, so I had to sell off my house to pay my bills. I'm okay now. And, and fingers crossed, I'll stay that way. I had breast cancer. I had to have my right breast removed. We call her Lefty now. <laughs> oh, don't tease her. Well, it's not me. She named herself. It's a miserable disease. I mean, so glad you're clear of it. Uh, who else? Maylene? What's your secret? I'm tired of being the black professor. Female professor. Mm. Why not just 
just professor. Labels are the worst. You can't know how many times I've been referred to as the butch gym teacher. I'm not very feminine, I know that, but I don't have the body type, but why label me? It's a form of bullying when you think about it. People don't realize they're doing it half the time. The teachers, too. And seniors, us. Anything else, Maylene? I'd like to get a doctorate. I've always wanted more education, but... Uh, well, good. Check out the college. I did. They don't offer a doctoral program in my field, anthropology. Maybe you can create one or, or get an online degree. You can do that? I think so. That's worth a try. I'll look into it. I'd like to live with a doctor. Do you want to tell us why you decided to live here? It's the only place I can afford right now. And I'm so grateful it's here. I lost my whole pension in a scam. I was so naive. No, stupid. The man was someone I worked with at the college for over 20 years. I went to his home on holidays. His daughter, Molly's my goddaughter. He did investments on the side. I thought a math professor, he's smart, would control, could control, could, I thought a math professor, he's smart, would, what could, what could go wrong? He said he could access my pension money before I reached 55 and invested it in a high school, in a high yield account. He talked about how I had no husband and no children to care for me and how I had to do whatever it took to, in, to increase my financial path for the future. And he told me this was a one time only legitimate opportunity. He called it pension liberation. Hmm. How right he was. It liberated my monies right from me. That's awful. I wasn't the only one. But that doesn't make me feel any better. All my life, I was careful with my money because I didn't have any to start with. Then suddenly, my, my friend, my colleague, starts to talk about a unique opportunity. I'm, I'm giving him account numbers and making rash decisions. Hmm. It's a quick deal. We'll have to quarter, we'll have to cour courier the papers right to you to sign. A month later, it was, it was all gone. Seems he was conned to. I, I feel feels is such a fool. I I killed myself getting a good education, faithfully paying back my loans, and then I throw it all away on a get rich scheme. I thought these things happened to other people, but not me. Terrible and sad after how hard you worked. Thanks. I still feel like a fool. No one here is a fool. Anything else? I'm a church goer. Can you recommend a church where I'd be welcome? Well, there are several. I, I don't go myself very often, although I think of myself as a Christian. I'll call my friends and ask around. I know the minister at the Congregational Church. I'll call her. Thank you. It, it's important to me. You're welcome, of course. Janet, what do you keep private that nobody knows? I'm tired of being alone. No family, and that's why this house seems ideal. I'm hoping for some female friends. But I like to find a partner, someone to share things with, go hiking with. I mean, been widowed too long. Teaching took my time, never had time for an outside life after my husband died. That must have been tough. You have no idea. Also, I missed out on having kids. I know I'm older, but if possible, I'd like to foster some. There's so many who need a home. I know I can't do it here, but maybe in a few years, 
it may not be realistic at my age, but I think Lawrence and I might have done it back then. Well, <laughs> that's enough about me. Your turn, Carol. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've never said this out loud. I feel this is the time for me to be someone, to do something. I felt held down by my husband, by a mundane job. This group home is my start to learn about taking care of myself, my finances. My husband took a second mortgage out on this house and threw it all away gambling. And since I never did any of the bills, I had no idea. Like you, Maylene, I was naive. When he died, I thought, well, at least I'll have the, all of his pension, but he had crashed that in, cashed that in as well. I went to the bank and got complete info on my finances, how to pay down my loan, etc. It was the banker who suggested running a rooming house. She explained how it would work to pay off my debts without having to spend my mother's small inheritance. Mm -hmm. Ellie came up with the senior women only idea. So without you women, I would lose the house. And I don't know what I'd be doing. On the bright side, I want to do something new, creative. That's a good sewer. Do something with that. You mean tailor clothes or alter or something? No, not just mundane sewing. She's so clever. She'll think of something. Anyway, I bought four notebooks. I'd like us to keep journals like the kids do about what works, what doesn't work, if everyone's willing. Good things, bad things, anything that troubles you. We'll have house meetings from time to time and to work stuff out. Nothing official. Just write down any thoughts you have. Uh, we're putting our pasts behind us. Amen. Hmm. <laughs> Amen is right. <laughs> now, as to the hard part, chores. I've made up a list of possible jobs. I'd like to do the lawn. I like it because it's seasonal. No work in winter. <laughs> no, except when it snows. Me and my big mouth. No, that's <laughs> fine. Thank you, Lord. I like to vacuum and dust. You're kidding me. It's yours. What else is there? Um, kitchen duty. General upkeep. I expect everyone to clean up their own dishes and stuff. And bathroom duty. I'll do bathrooms. That leaves you with the kitchen. Is that okay, Carol? It's what I would have picked, so we're fine. So I've made notes if anyone has any questions. Any further questions or comments? We were hoping to sign our leases today. Oh, of course. Let me go get them. I've already signed mine. This will make my day. Having this taken care of. It's the same as the one I sent you online. It's simple but legal. Oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> really. Well. Here's my first month rent. And mine as well. I forgot my check. Actually, I didn't even think about it. I'm sorry, Carol. No, I'll just have to give away your room. What? Kidding. <laughs> so we'll see everyone in a few days, as, as early as you'd like. Does your home have a name? A name? No. I never thought about it. It goes by the street address. You should name it. How about... After the beautiful trees in this area, uh, the maples or the oak. What about something like the salvation? Mm, those are both good ideas. Any others? I think it should be the haven. It is one for me. Right. Um, yes. How clever of you. That's exactly what it is. Everyone agree? That's perfect. I agree. Thank you, Ellie. So here's to us at the Haven. Here, here. <laughs> here, here. End of scene. Act one, scene three. Three months later, it's the end of August. Carol is on her laptop and Janet's reading the paper. It's quiet here today. Yeah, 
He leads a church and Millie's at the college, I think. I am so proud of her. She's really doing well. And you, you're doing well too. This adventure is just what I hoped it would be. I really appreciate it. Oh, it saved me and the house. And I like having people around. Can I mention one thing? Well, of course. I don't think Ellie has ever cleaned a bathroom. Melina and I have to clean ours after Ellie has cleaned. No, oh, I didn't realize. I've been cleaning up ours as well. I don't want to make a big thing about it, but... You know, I'll talk to her. Uh, she's always had a cleaning lady. Thanks for thanks for talking with me. A le lesson is coming up. Thanks for listening. It's been a whole new start for the four of us. You know what? We're the new American family. That we are. It's so peaceful too. Not like my former life. That I that I really appreciate. You want some coffee? I made some a few minutes ago. Love it. Thanks. Janet goes off to the kitchen. Maylene, who's dressed for church, bursts through the front door, talking angrily to herself. She throws her keys on the rack and starts to go up to her room. Carol stands up and Janet enters from the kitchen. What on earth? What's going on? Can't talk now. What happened? Just just can't talk. Well, who's going to settle you down then? We're here. We're your friends. Talk to us. Come on, sit down. I went to a new church. Heard their choir was just wonderful. As I was leading the service, I heard the N word. When I turned around, I saw a group of teenage boys. Typical. I asked them what they said, and they just stood there, mute. I said, I heard you. Who said, who said it? One of the deacons comes along and asks what the trouble is. When I told him, I got the boys will be boys comment. I told him that wasn't a proper answer. And he said, perhaps I was at the wrong church. I can't believe that. Did you get his name? No. I got grabbed by my arm and hustled out the door. That's outrageous. What church? Congregational. I know there aren't that many Black people in this city, but the college is integrated. Are we going back to segregation again? It's okay for the big black boys to play on their winning teams, but not okay for a respectable black lady to attend their church? Hmm. I was hoping to join the choir. I'm so, I'm so mad. I, I, I could spit oh, and, and crushed. I so enjoyed being here and and at a church of all places. I should out. I should out by Dan. Get ready, girls. We're going to go visit the minister. He's not going to know what hit him. We may be older, but we're a powerful bunch. I'll call the local TV station. I've got poster board in the attic from Laura's artwork days. We'll make signs. We'll make them so uncomfortable uncomfortable they'll be sorry they ever elected that deacon. Okay, when we go, we'll bring phones too because we are going to record what's told to us. What on earth? What's happening? You're just in time, Ellie. We're going to go picket the congregational church. What? Why? Some boys called Maylene the, the N-word. Why? After the service on the way out. And the choir was still singing, too. Ellie goes I to know. the desk in the living room and starts to dial. I know the pastor. I'm calling him. Give me a minute. Hello? This is Ellie. May I speak to Bob? I guess she doesn't know him. 
Do you have any idea what kind of trouble you're in? I have three irate women on my hands, four counting me. We will make you sorry you ever decided to be a minister. I'm talking about how you need to step in and take care of this. You need to solve the problem. I tell you, if you just shut up. One of my friends was called the N-word after the service this morning at your church. One of your deacons defended the boys who said it and rushed her out the door. You do that. And quickly. And I, we, expect an apology from the boys themselves. Or we'll be picketing the church. Bob, you don't have that big a congregation anymore. So you better be on your toes. Or we'll be all over the Twitters and that Instagram. Our camera phones are at the ready. Ha! That got him. He's a really good guy. But he needs to be pushed hard. Known him since grade school. He says he knows which one of the deacons spoke to you. And he'll handle it. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. You have a camera phone? Not yet. But he doesn't know that. Okay, you go, Ellie. That was wonderful. There's the new you. Mm -hmm. You feel better now? I do. You women are the greatest. We got your back. And your butt, too. <laughs> what does that mean, Ellie? Well, I don't know. I just want her to be guarded on all sides. <laughs> all praise <laughs> to the Lord. <laughs> End of scene. It's three months later. The end of November. Maylene is writing in her journal. Carol is at her desk. You look busy over there. <laughs> Just jotting down some things. I, I, I want to remember them. Thesis stuff. I think you're the only one using your journal. I'm, I'm not. Saw both Janet and Ellie writing in theirs last week. I wish I had something to write. Here's something. I've been meaning to tell you. I was talking to a new friend at choir practice yesterday, and, and she asked me where I live. The whole Haven idea came out, and she was just so impressed. She, she wanted to know how we operate. What'd you tell her? You, you know about how we share costs and jobs and how it has helped you keep the house and, and give us all a reasonable place to stay. Uh, what was her reaction? She wants to talk to you ab about her father. Oh, I don't really want a man moving in. Besides, I have a lady waiting for a vacancy. No, her father lives alone. In a big house, she worries about him and wants company for him. Oh, well, maybe I'll call her. Help yeah. someone out. Maylene hands Carol a note as Carol gets ready to go out. Hmm. Here's her name and number. I promised you'd call. I will as soon as I get back. Darn grocery store, I am so tired of having to go there. <laughs> I hear you. Carol exits. Seconds later, Ellie comes from upstairs. Did Carol leave already? Just. Sorry. I wanted her to pick up some apples for me. Ellie? What? Text her. Janet enters through oh. the front door. She hangs up her keys and retrieves a note, which she then reads and puts in her pocket. Cool. Hey, I wanted to talk with you two about your journals. What? Would you be willing to share them with me? Why? I'm doing some research for one of my classes about aging. 
the the difficulties of of fears? I don't know. I don't think you'll find mine very interesting. Can you let me decide? Sure. Yes. I'll go get it. Someone called Ben phoned. I left the message on the board. Thanks. Got it. I'll see him at school. Hmm. Is he um someone special? My department head probably wants to talk about the scholarship student who's not doing well. He left me a note at school too. Hmm. He he sounds nice. He is runs a very good program. Married? Widowed. Do you like him? He's okay, yeah. A good guy. Yeah, just okay. He's my department head. I can't be drooling over my department head. <laughs> Drool away. <laughs> Besides, he's five years younger than me. Life is short. Drool. Can I read your journal? I'll think about it. Is it covered in drool? Hey, leave. No. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Don't forget. Janet heads upstairs. Seconds later, the doorbell rings and rings again. Coming, coming. She races to the door. My key didn't work. Hello. Hello. Uh, is my mother home? What's your name? What? What's her name? Who Who are you? This is my mother's house. Oh. Oh, are you Laura? Carol's daughter? Yes, of course. Oh, is she still out? Her keys are gone. And you are? Maylene, I have the front uh, left room. You live here now? She has a living now? Have done for six months now. It's, it's working out so well. I'll bet. That's always been my favorite room. I won the lottery. I'm, I'm confused. Do you won the lottery and you're working for my mother? We all work together. I didn't think my mother had money for help. <laughs> uh, we all help. What? It's part of the deal. That's what's so great about it. There's more of you? Four of us all together, including your mom. What's What's going on here? I didn't think my mother had money for help. At least she doesn't make your uniform. Um, I've been teasing you. I'm, I'm one of her tenants. Oh, she's running a boarding house? Uh, sort of. But you don't think of it like that. The door opens and Carol enters with one small bag. I forgot my stupid list. All I got was Ellie's apples. Hello, Mom. Laura. What a surprise. I'm sorry. I wasn't here. On a business trip, just stopped by. That's great. You've met Professor Haslam? Yes. You're running a boarding house now? Uh, well, kind of. Mom? Let me put this in the kitchen. Carol exits to the kitchen. There's coffee. Thanks, Maylene. Maylene gives Laura a look and then leaves the front hall. Carol re-enters. Mom, what's going on here? What? No. How are you? How are you? Really well. Thanks. So what is this? How long has this been going on? For the last six months. How did you find these people? Craigslist. Craigslist? That's so dangerous. It all worked out okay. Ellie and I interviewed everyone. You remember Ellie. Maylene said four. Janet's the fourth. 
Who is she? A retired PE teacher. A lesbian? I never asked. Why? What would that matter? Been married? Long ago. She's a lesbian. I don't care if she's purple. She has no one. Her husband died in the war in the 70s. No parents. I'm looking after them. That's all you need to know. So someone's in my room. Janet. With all my stuff. That must be crowded. It's not. Where's my stuff? In boxes. In the attic. You didn't think I'd want to come home and sleep in my own bed? Not really. Not after 11 years. What would Daddy think of this arrangement? Your father mortgaged this house to fund his gambling and left me to deal with it. This is how I'm dealing with it. What about his pension? You're not poor. He cashed it in. Left it on the tables. What do you live on? My measly social security. Half the value of his social security and the money that my parents left me that he couldn't get his hands on. I would have thought you'd think my solution was ingenious. In a way, but you could sell the house and live off the proceeds. Four bedrooms, two and a half baths in this neighborhood would go for a lot. They go to some nice retirement community. You haven't been listening. Your father mortgaged this house to the hilt. I've been struggling for almost a year trying to figure it all out. I, I can't sell it and go to a nice retirement community. I barely own it. I've created my own retirement community in my own home. What if you die? Thinking ahead? If I die ahead of these women, they'll keep living here. They get someone to replace me. That's all worked out legally. But what about the house? I always thought it would come to me. Laura, 11 years ago, it might have. I'm sorry, but it's how I have to live now. A boarding house. It's so common. Now I'm common. I shouldn't be surprised. You've always embarrassed me. Always on a budget telling your corny stories and wearing your handmade clothes and old and old mended coat. It's not worn out. Why should I throw it away? You never take care of yourself. Look at you. I know how you feel, how you've always felt. I found your letters to your father, read your texts on his phone. He's always gloated that you'd call when I wasn't home. You've always made it perfectly clear how you felt about me. I wanted more than this boring little town. I wanted to be somebody. You live this plain little life. How do you stand it? You never travel. You would never try sushi or anything different. How can you go through life like that? Why are you here? I told you I was on, I was nearby on business and thought I'd drop in for an hour or so. Really? An hour? You can spare that with your fancy job? Oh boy, I'm bothered. You filled my childhood home with old women. You were always so jealous of me. Hated that I did so well. You were content to be a nobody. I was content to be a mother. Here it comes, the mother thing. I find it sad that you didn't appreciate it. Don't appreciate it. I gave you a safe upbringing, support for everything you wanted to do. I went to every event you ever were involved in. I took a job so you could go to a fancy college. Most women work, big deal. Oh, to me, it was a big deal. It was the first time I got out of the house. The first time I got paid to work for the work that I did. I'm not skilled like you, but I did well. I got regular raises, even if I wasn't making a lot of money. It was enough to send you off to your first choice school. I asked for nothing. I banked every dollar for you. I've said thank you. No, you haven't. Not ever. You're a taker, like your father. Everyone in town knows about your success. They all ask me about you, and I answer as if I hear from you every day. 
I'm too damn hurt to let them know I haven't seen or, or really heard from you other than a note from time to time. Notes and cards sent by your secretary. Oh, she must be a terrific gal. The cards are thoughtful and sweet. The only time you ever came home was for your flying visit to when your father died, crying your eyes out. Never once asking how I was doing. I loved him. You never respected dad, always nagging at him. Oh, you mean about his women and his gambling? He was a no good sot. You'll never believe it because he put stars in your eyes. You lived a life of plenty while I wore cheap shoes and homemade clothes. I put everyone first, but no more. Your father put me in debt and I am doing my best to get out of it. Take, 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 and then throw away. That was your father. That's you. You have no idea how it feels and probably never will. It's as the young people say, it's all about me. And if you don't like it, tough. It's my turn now. I hope when you get to be my age, you won't regret your attitude. I hope you'll have friends and make friends like I have to see you through. Because I've never been happier. Nice to see you, Mom. Laura slams out the door, leaving Carol staring after her. End of Act One. Act Two, Scene One. The living room, two months later, the end of January. Carol is writing at her desk. Ellie enters with her cell phone. You're not gonna believe this. Elliot's asked me to move to Hawaii. They have bought a home. I'd live in. Why now? Honestly, I think they'd want a babysitter and I'd be cheap, free. Mm. Oh. How do you feel about it? I just lost the script, sorry. Let's go back to the top. Okay. Hang on, I can't, hang on, okay. You tell me when you have it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Act two, scene one. Living room, two months later, the end of January. Carol is writing at her desk and Ellie enters with her cell phone. You're not going to believe this. Ellie has asked me to move, in, move to Hawaii. They bought a home. I'd live in. Well, why now? Honestly? I think they want a babysitter and I'd be cheap, free. How do you feel about it? I wouldn't know anyone. They live way out. I've seen pictures. I'd probably be stuck without a car. Do you want to go? To see them, especially little Bane, yes. She's already over a month old. And leave your new job? That? I'm not sure about it. Ask for what you want. What do you mean? He's a lawyer. He's got money. He'll be cheap if you let him. If you feel you'll be stuck with child care and not able to have a life of your own, ask for what you want. How can I? Well, here's how. You'll write him an email and say exactly what you said to me. You'll ask for a car, travel expenses, You'll ask for a trial period. And if you go, a trip to the States once a year so you can visit me and the women. Anything you want. Will you save my room? Of course not. But you can bunk with me. Okay. Hmm. You'll also indicate you want days off and you'll want information ahead of time about the area, including senior senators and maybe church. And then you'll research it all before you say yes. We'd never think of all that. Well, that's why I'm telling you. Stick up for yourself with him. Backbone. It's time. To be honest, I'm not sure I want to go. I like my job at the lab. Professor Jacobs depends on me. I want to get my AA degree. Delay your departure. Elliot can wait. I was hoping to continue classes. Get my AA and then... BA degree? Maybe you maybe they have a college close by. Two birds. Check it out. They do. BYU. 
That's where Alani got her degree. That's in Utah. It, it's a Mormon school. Alani is Mormon. Oh, well, that's unusual. Many Hawaiians are. Hmm. Hmm. I, I think you've got the school mixed up, though. BYU is in Utah. Maybe. Also, I'd miss our working together. I'm so excited about what you've done. We could still work together. The joys of the internet. You sound very unsure. Found a whole new life at the college. And here. I didn't know what I was missing. Never had any guidance as a kid. College wasn't in my mind at all. Now, with living here, I have the money for classes. Then this turns up. I do want to see them, especially the baby. But I don't know what I'd find. I raised Elliot. I'm not sure I want to raise another child at this point. God, I sound so selfish. Maylene happily enters with parcels, and she listens in. It's called being wholesomely selfish. What's good for you? You have no responsibilities except to yourself, other than paying your rent to me, of course. You've learned to research. Use it. Okay. I'm on it. I'll also check in with Professor Jacobs. Ask his advice. Can I send you an email to proof? Before I send it on to Elliot? Of course. Ellie exits. That sounded interesting. Mm, Ellie heard from her son again. Wants her to move to Hawaii. Hmm. Nice he's in touch with her. Think she'll go? Mm, not sure. Been shopping? Yes, yes. I, I found a great, great rest. <laughs> oh, let me see. <laughs> this is my new church dress for a special service. I call I can't believe it, but I've been asked to serve as a deacon. That's wonderful. Can we all go to the service? You don't go to church. I Well, for this, I will. Congratulations. Thank you. After my shaky start there, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Is that deacon still there? The one who? No, he's, he's been voted out. I'm to take his place. Oh, dear Lord, I, I sound like I'm I'm gloating. Oh, gloat away. Good for you. Mm. What else did you buy? Maylene takes out another dress. Oh, it's just oh that is such a great color. <laughs> I thought so, too. It looks big, though. Did they give you the right size? They did. It's it's for you. I'm 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 glad you like it. What? Why? Because I saw it and I thought of you. No, take it back. It, it's too nice. You're you're too nice. I don't know where I'd be without you. And and don't get too excited. It was on sale. I never buy anything full price. I've never had a dress like that. Don't you have a interview coming up? It'd be perfect for my interview. That's what I thought. But... Stop it and just say thanks. Thank you, Maylene. I hope you'd like it. What's the interview? When is it? I mean? Oh, this week. I've been invited to lunch. Where? That new Asian fusion place. Fancy. <laughs> Ellie enters again and listens. Uh, this is the first department store dress I have ever owned. Can you believe that? I, I usually make all my own clothes or shop at Target. When was the last time you made or bought a dress? I 
I can't even tell you. Which is why I bought this dress for you. The color is perfect for you. That was so nice, Maylene. Oh, it was my pleasure. Maylene's been made a deacon at the church. You must have really had an impact on old Bob the minister. That's wonderful. He knows what's right. Me too. Carol, I've decided I don't need to do any research right now. I'm going to stay here until I get my AA degree. That's wonderful. Maybe you can fly out for a visit this summer before school starts. It would have to be a short trip. I'm going to summer school. There's a course I want to take. Advanced statistics. It's only offered in the summer. Uh, you amaze me. I amaze myself. Hmm. Is it okay to say that? Oh, without a doubt. Come on, ladies, upstairs. I, I want Carol to model her dress. <laughs> and yours too, Madam Deacon. Hmm. <laughs> the women gather their things and exit. Act two. Scene two, living room of Carol's home a week later. Carol is humming as she works. What's with you today? I'm just doing my thing. Why are you humming? I didn't know I was. How did the lunch go? Is he going to, is he going to buy the franchise? I'm not sure. He sounded interested. Well, you're back. Probably this week. I'm going to lunch again. Well, well. There's no well, well. It's a business deal. Most people don't need two lunches to decide. Well, maybe I wasn't clear enough. Maybe he wants to see you again? I doubt that. Why? Because you're over 60? Men are interested until they're dead. Stop it. It's pretty terrific in your new dress. Oh, thank you. I was comfortable. Comfortable? My ass. You looked hot. Are you coming on to me? I am not. Maylene oh. Andrews. Does she look great? Does she look great? <laughs> if you... Doesn't she look great, Maylene? I, I'd have to... Oh... Okay, um, sorry. Uh, she does. She does. I think <laughs> an impression. She's going for another lunch. Well, well. <laughs> Stop with the well, well. It's for business. Nothing more. I have come up with another dress. Uh, you can't wear that same one. Oh, I have plenty of other dresses. If you want to look like an old church lady... <laughs> Thanks. Have you ever heard her hum a song? Yeah, she's been humming all morning. Ah, uh, never heard her hum. What are you not telling us? I've been thinking about the business, that's all. Wondering if selling this one franchise will lead to more work. You've got a great business plan. Will we still be your roommates when you become rich? Hmm, that's never going to happen. You mean you dump us? <laughs> no, I mean the rich part. Ah, you never know. Mr. Lunch might be the start of something big. Stop. Find the place, all right? Yeah, I, I took an Uber. I was early. Early's good. That's really on time. Yeah. We met at the bar and had a drink. Getting interesting. One drink. Martini. <laughs> I didn't know you liked martinis. Hmm. Well, now I do. It was my first. And the second with lunch. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I hope you didn't slur your words. Oh, it was only two drinks. I'm not a child. It's just worried because you usually don't drink. Well, I did today. Okay, that place is expensive. Okay. What did you eat? Shark fin soup and abalone. Oh, you ordered from the right side of the menu? <laughs> he suggested it. Some business lunch. What was he like? Nice. A tablecloth is nice. What did he look like? <laughs> oh, 
nice. He was trim, looks fit, likes the theater. Jackpot. <laughs> oh, stop teasing me. <laughs> I think, wait, I feel he may be right for you. Never seen you so uh, <clears throat> close mouth. Uh, did he shake your hand when he left? No, he gave me a ride home. And then? Before I, I got out of the car, he leaned over and kissed me. On the mouth? On the cheek. Well, well. 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 <laughs> End of scene. Act two, scene three. It's the end of May, a year later. Carol and Maylene are preparing a going away party for Ellie. Do you think she knows? Oh, I hope not. I want this to be a big surprise. What time will she be back? Mm, after her last exam, Jan Janet's meeting her on campus to make sure she doesn't get here early. We have about 10 minutes. I'm so proud of her. She's worked so hard. And you, Dr. To Be, you're almost there. If I can finish my darn dissertation. What's stopping you? I've been very tired lately. So I wanted, so I went to the college infirmary and after the doctor examined me, she said, there's something wrong with you. Do you, do you have any papers due? She got my number just like that. Now I know I'm procrastinating, which which isn't like me. I think I'm afraid to fail. At this late stage, I don't think so. Just do it. Ha! I sound like an ad, but it is as simple as that. You've done all the research. The door opens and Janet comes in. Is she here? Ellie? No. She must have left by another door. This has been like her. She promised to meet me. I'll text her. I tried that. She didn't answer. Call her. Message. Didn't answer. What do we do? Wait, I guess. I'll go back to the campus and see if I can find her. Oh, I, I don't know. Tr try phoning her again. Hmm. Yeah, I just sent her a text. She she hasn't replied. Oh, so much for her party. Good thing I made a cold supper. Hmm. Call Professor Jacobs. Oh, Ellie would hate that. Well, too bad. We need to know where she is. Do you have his number? It's on the board. Good. Call. Okay, but if she's mad, I'm going to tell her it was your idea. Carol dials the house phone on her desk, then speaks rapidly. Uh, <clears throat> Professor Jacobs, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. This is Carol, Ellie's housemate. We're worried about her. She was supposed to meet Janet. Uh, hasn't answered texts. Okay. Mm. Uh, what's, go what's going on? She's with him. He's getting her. I, I think they're in a bar. A bar? Something must have happened. I hope she didn't fail her classes. She's counting on getting her degree. Darn. Uh, Ellie, uh, hi. We've been worried about you. You were supposed to meet Janet. I don't know. I, I, I know. I know. We're not checking up on you. Uh-huh. Sure. I understand. I I'll tell her. She's just around the corner in the campus bar. I, I think she's tipsy. She said to say sorry, Janet. This is so unlike her. I'm 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 really worried. She rarely drinks. Do you think they're, you know, seeing each other? No, he can't be more than 45. I'm gonna be ticked if she finds someone and I don't. Hey, I'm the one looking for a man. You think she's a cougar? Really? It's always the quiet ones. That's me. I never think anyone notices me. Are you kidding? You are so elegant. Always. My mm. style guru. I promise people notice you. Mm. You've sharpened up all of us. 
If only I could get away with wearing a dress. Mm. Tall women have it easier. Clothes seem to drape better. You know, you've even made my lumpy figure look better. Oh. Ellie flies in the door, dances around. She's a bit tipsy. <laughs> I ran. I did it. Who wants to say? Me. Ellie hands Carol two papers. Mm. This is for my family, wherever they may be. I was always the dumb one. At least that's what everyone said. Once I overheard my mother say, Ellie's a sweet girl, but she's a bit slow. I believed them. I was never encouraged. My husband kept it up by putting me down. I had to turn over my paycheck to him every week. I got an allowance. I didn't know any better. Stupid me. I never thought I could do anything. Until I met you, Carol. Meeting you changed my life. You always encouraged me. I started my first bank account because of you. Now look at me. An AA degree. And on my way to who knows what. And I've got an award. Best grades in my class. <laughs> me. <laughs> I know I'm older and I'll never have a career like a 30-year-old, but this is for me, for my mind, my soul. I was so excited. I was celebrating with Professor Jacobs. I lost track. Sorry, Janet. I thought I'd be back in time to meet you. Carol hands Ellie a letter. You got mail from BYU in Hawaii. You were right. I'm sorry I corrected you about the location. It's okay. I just figured I was wrong until I found out I was right. Well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> didn't think it was important. Ellie tears open the envelope, then looks up at the women. I'm afraid to open the letter. No, you're not. You're a girl graduate with the best grades. She opens it. I got in. Oh, 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 I got a full scholarship, a special program for those over 50. Now I can go on and get my bachelor's degree for sure and live with Elliot. Oh, I knew there was a reason for a party. A party? Graduation party. Oh, well done. And you can do it. I've never had a party. Not ever. Not even for my birthday. My mother always said parties were overrated. Tell me there's a cake. Carrot, and it weighs a ton. Janet and Carol <laughs> exit to the kitchen. The doorbell rings. Maylene heads to the door and picks up a vase of flowers. I'm having dessert first. Two pieces. Oh, thank you, ladies. Such good friends. Someone just dropped off flowers. Who for? Janet. Mm. Janet, Janet, come in here. Come in here, please. What's up? These came for you. Oh. Oh, I never thought. Um... Admirer? Hmm, not so secret, I don't think. <laughs> Read the card. I, I don't get it. She hands the flowers to Janet, who reaches in the card and laughs out loud. But <laughs> Ben, my department head, has been asking me out for months, literally. Finally, he said, what do I have to do to make you say yes? I finally said, send me flowers and woo me. I was just kidding. I mean, look at the card. <laughs> Hands the card to Carol. Woo, woo, Ben. There's woo, no woo, way you can do Woo, 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 Ben. <laughs> There's no way you can turn him down now. And who's the cougar now? Uh, 
he's only five years younger. I guess I'm getting what I asked for when I first moved here. And now I'm scared to death. No need. He's already smitten. I don't think anybody's ever been smitten with me. I usually scare off men. But clearly not Ben. Or your late husband. Call him. You have to thank him. Come on, do it. Carol exits to the kitchen. In my room. Come back down for my party. After you talk to Romeo. End of scene. Act two, scene four. Anything good? I think you got a check. Uh, probably that referee job I did. Uh, look at this. I got a letter from Laura. In her own handwriting. Huh. I'm glad she's writing to you. Carol opens the letter. She's coming home. Today. That's odd. She wrote this last week and I just got it. She can stay in Ellie's old room. That worked out well. well she'll probably book into a hotel after last time. She will need to now. I've got to eat. Teaching that volleyball class. Enjoying your retirement? Funny. I really like the class. I like working with college kids after all those teens. Janet exits to the kitchen. Carol continues sorting mail into piles. The doorbell rings and Carol answers. Laura is loaded down with bags. Hi. Right. I just this minute got your letter. You should have called. I know, but sorry. Laura starts traveling light. Bags. Traveling light. She puts down her bags and looks at her mother. What's wrong? What's going on? I got fired. Really? <laughs> How come? Good question. Totally out of the blue. Well, I'm sure with your experience. Mom. Can I come home? But, but what about New York? I can't stay there. What happened to you? I, I thought you were all set. It's stupid and naive. Come in. Tell me. The company was sold and they laid off everyone. Everyone was let go. They can do that? Yes, and they did. When did this happen? Six months ago. Why didn't you look for another job? I tried, but there's not much out there. I got unemployment compensation, but it didn't even cover my maintenance fees. I'd been in the job for over 10 years. Years, been traveling the world for them. I had no idea this could happen. Don't you have any savings? I never saved. I spent. Like, the world was free. It's not. I know that now. I just kept buying things. Like co-op and Audi. I was in over my head, but didn't pay attention. I thought, I have a great job. I'm making a lot of money. Then I got fired. One month's severance on my base pay. I've lived off commissions for all these years. So it was like cutting my pay by four. I maxed out my credit cards and then was spending more on interest. I've lost everything. You're your father's daughter, all right. I'm your daughter too. Can you help me? You can stay here until next week when Wendy moves in. Wendy, who's Wendy? Our new roommate. If the room is empty, why can't I have it? I've signed a lease with Wendy for Ellie's room. Her move-in date is next Tuesday. But what am I supposed to do then? I don't know. I can house you for five days. Then what? Mom, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. It's not up to me. Yes, it's up to you. You're my mother. You have a very short memory. What? Do you have any idea how you hurt me the last time you flew through here? Suddenly, I'm supposed to jump because you made a mess of your life? My handmade clothes are good enough for you now? Mom, really? Take your stuff upstairs. Don't unpack. 
Laura starts to lug her suitcases out of the room. You'll need to contribute to the house for the first for the five days that you're here. I hope you have cash. Laura looks at her mother, then continues out of the room to the upstairs. Janet appears from the kitchen. You're one tough broad. Oh, I should have been tougher a long time ago. Sorry to eavesdrop. What will she do? She's not, not going to upset our home. I won't have that. I'd be willing to share my her old room for a while. It's your room. I'm not there much. With the stain over bins, and I just got a new coaching job. That's great. As I said, still enjoying entire retirement? If you haven't noticed, I don't sit around. Hmm, that's an understatement. I want some of your energy. Seriously, I'd be willing to help. Well, we'll see how it goes. She'll have to get a job right away. I won't have her sitting around. And she'll have to pay to, to stay here, just like the rest of us. I feel sorry for Laura. But good for you for standing up to her. House phone rings and Carol answers. Haven House, who's calling? What? Oh, um, I'll see if she's here. It's your mother. I, I thought your parents were... Hang up. What? Are you, are you sure? Hang up. Um, uh, she's not here right now. May I take a message? Oh, uh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Y yes. Yes. Okay. Got it. Goodbye. She hangs up and looks at Janet. How did she get this number? What does she want? I am sorry to tell you, but your father passed away. Huh? She wants to talk to you. After all this time? She asked for you to call her. Maybe I will. Uh, maybe I won't. Maybe she needs you. You should give her the benefit of the doubt. I haven't heard from them in over 40 years. Wow. Really? Are you the only one? Yeah, I think I think they stopped having kids when they saw what they got. A big athletic lump with a loud voice. They hated that I did sports. My mother kept pushing me into the arts. I had no talent for that. I was the antithesis of a good Jewish girl. So that's where you go on Saturdays. Yeah, after everything, yes, I'm still a good Jewish girl. Where do they live? I don't know, maybe still on Long Island. That's where I grew up. Well, I didn't know. My parents couldn't deal with my marriage to Lawrence. They turned their backs on me, cut me out of their lives. I'm probably the only one in the world who would walk out and fiddle on the roof when they send their daughter Chava. I couldn't take it. Left the theater. I put them behind me all these years. Couldn't you forgive her and make the effort to visit and say goodbye to your father? I have my classes and my coaching. Find a substitute. Ben will help. You'll regret this for the rest of your life if you don't go. <laughs> You're a good one to talk. Your daughter needs you. And you give her five days in the house? No, oh, it's different. <laughs> no. In many ways, it's not. Call her. Carol leaves the room. Janet stands there staring at the number. She's clearly convicted about what to do. Finally, she goes to the house phone and dials the number. It's Janet. Yes, that's why I'm calling. When? A tough thing to have to deal with, you know. I'm coaching. Uh, my schedule is tight. I, I, I can't get away. It's a little late for that. Oh, don't talk to me about a broken heart. I know all about it. She hangs up the phone. Laura appears and stares at Janet. Looks like you've seen a ghost. You could say that. Where's my mom? Kitchen, I think. 
do you need anything? A new heart. Janet exits. Laura heads towards the kitchen. Mom? Mom? Yes? Can we talk about? I don't know. Yes, I do. Please, I can't stand. I need you. I need to apologize for everything. Go ahead. You're not making it easy. Should I? How's the house going? Great, actually. My boarding house idea, which you negated, is working out well. What? I'm sorry, Daddy left you in such a mess. Me too. Is there anything I can do to help? No, all my projects are going along very well. Projects? I run several houses now. You do? How? When? Just before you stormed out of here the last time, Maylene talked with this lady at her church about us, about the Haven. The Haven? That's what we named this house. Seemed the woman was the woman was worried about her father who lived alone in his big house, said he didn't need the money so much as some company. Lucky him. Yeah. The lady asked if I would talk to them about our setup. I said yes, and I did. They offered to pay me to organize and run the man's house, pay their bills, etc. So now he has two women and another man living in and a daily cleaning lady. His daughter is ecstatic because her father has company. She's hired me, so she doesn't have to deal with anything concerning the house. And I'm making money. That's amazing. You're amazing. The next thing I know, there's a newspaper article. Then AARP calls and does a story in their magazine. And I'm getting calls from Colorado and California. It seems like I've hit on a good thing, so... I franchise the whole thing, and I get a cut from every house that's set up each month. Oh, I, I'm speechless. All this in a little over a year. Two years. Pretty good for an old broad and an old mended coat, right? And I've been able to reduce my girl's monthly payment by $100 each by paying down my mortgage with the extra money. Seemed like the right thing to do. I'm embarrassed I said all of that. Well, I would hope so. And I have a bunch of new clothes you'd be happy to know. Maylene is an absolute stylist. You look really good. Thank you, Laura. Do you know that's the first time you've ever said anything nice like that? For a lot of things. I've got a lot to learn, even with my Ivy League degree. I agree. So tell me more about the business. Well, I have an offer to sell the whole thing. And if I do, I'd still get my cut each month. Ellie is even running a home in Hawaii. I am so stunned. Surprised, shocked, all, actually, and proud. I never knew this side of you. Janet comes into the room. I never had this side to me before. I decided that it was never too late to learn something new, to start something new. And after I first met with the bank, I took some business classes at the college and never looked back. Sorry to interrupt. I just talked to Ben. He wants me to make the trip home. He's going to set up all my subs and he's going to go with me. That's wonderful. I'm so glad he'll be with you. My mother won't know what hit her. He's Jewish. As soon as she meets him, she'll forget all about daddy. 
At the very least, it'll soften the blow. Sorry to hear about your father. Thank you. Um, we'll be gone about 10 days. If it's okay with your mother, you can stay in my room while I'm gone once Wendy arrives. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Have to get ready. We're leaving tonight. Just uh, want to call my mother and tell her. She heads towards the house phone and dials. I'm not giving her my cell number yet. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Hi, it's me. I'll be there first thing tomorrow. No, 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 don't say anymore. I'm bringing a friend. Don't get excited. He's just a friend. That you sleep with. Stop. No, I wasn't talking to you. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. She hangs up. I for that. Well, good. And I'm glad you're going. It's the right thing to do. You remember that. She quickly leaves to go upstairs. That was nice of her. About the room. She's a terrific gal. Mom, about work. Uh, when I got off the bus, I ran into Amy. You rode a bus? Yes. Anyway, we talked and I told her what happened to me, how I lost my job. She told me she was just promoted to the manager of the cafe and offered me her old job. I'd start Monday. It's, it's not what I'm used to, but... It's quite the come down. I know. Uh, believe me. I know. Mom, can, can we use the next 10 days to start over? I'd like that. I've got to get ready. Going out to dinner. Bill will be here shortly. Bill. And by the way, because you're taking over Ellie's room for a few days, you're in charge of cleaning the two bathrooms. Carol leans in and kisses Laura, then exits upstairs, leaving Laura with her mouth hanging open. End of play.